I don't think that wanting to ensure the future survival of my people is unacceptable or should be seen as offensive to other people. We have a right to our exclusive identity, our home history, heritage, culture, and to exist as a people. Nobody has the right to take that from us. The people who are trying to take that from us are the extremists, in my opinion. And I didn't, like, I didn't think that that feels at all like exclusive or um, kind of contradictory with the, this lovely man could make a home here because he's 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 a gift to the gift to some of the Roman yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and this is children that have been raped in racially and religiously exactly. motivated crimes by people of his community. How is my community supposed to reconcile the fact that they opened up their doors, gave refuge to people that said, please, let us come here for a better life, and then what do you do? Rape, rob, extort, terrorize, and kill our people, and you expect us not to be angry about that? That's, yes, I, I recognize none of that in this lovely man. And in, in most but it is coming from his community against mine, and it's racially and religiously motivated by foreign peoples that are coming to our country from our gratitude and kindness. Rape is not an exclusively Asian thing. There are white folks who... Yes, there are white men that rape. There are rapists of all things. The difference is that this is a racially and religiously motivated act of genocide that is targeted against our people to cause our people's harm. In the Genocide Convention, it specifically states, B means causing physical and mental harm to members of a specific group. So you're not going to argue with me that gang raping children is not going to cause them serious physical and mental harm. And the no, difference is, is there's been a million white children, one million white kids in the last few decades that have been raped by Muslim Pakistani men. It is targeted and our community have a right to be angry. If it was any other country and any other peoples, they'd be burning down the homes and shoving you out the country. But because white people are so tolerant, so far all we've done is demos, but that will come to an end, and I assure you. And we don't involve ourselves in gratuitous violence and, and terrorism. We're white people. We desolate continents, we wipe out civilizations, and we start world wars. So far we've been tolerant. But you wait until that tolerance is gone, when the Anglo-Saxon no longer wishes to tolerate the rape, robbing and extortion and theft of our identity. What's going to happen from Germany then? or from Britain? Because they were originally Jews and Saxons and Anglos from Germany. The yeah, Anglo-Saxons are a mix of the Celts and the Saxons. All Northern and Western Jews, European white race people. We have no genetic difference in our composition. Europeans are all one brotherhood. Before that, there wasn't any black, browns, or Asians, or anything else living in Britain. In fact, in, in the 1950s, it was, was less than 0.3% in Britain in were foreign. Syria, so what was Europe then? But even the definition, the con even the concept of Europe, Europa, Europea, was different a thousand years ago. The Romans included Northern Africa, they included parts of Syria. So there's been a heritage of change. The terms they use, what is Europe, what is Britain, all this is constant change. And people, Britain's human beings not have been changed moving. at all. Britain has been known as Britain and Great Britain since the Romans. Romans. Right, Britons. Oh, can we really can say the same? Right, so your home doesn't exist. It's been populated by lots of people. There's no such thing as Asians or Pakistanis, and it'd be perfectly fine if we were to wipe you out. Let's take your lands, let's take your identity, let's rewrite your history so that you're not part of it and make you not exist. You know why? Because nations and people are so interchangeable that it doesn't matter if we genocide an entire peoples because we're all the same, right? Katie Fanning, Bubba Kate versus the state. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Chris Mitchell podcast. What a lovely way to inspire me to do this show. Absolutely fantastic, as always, Miss Fanny. It's a pleasure to have you on the show again. It's been a long time coming. You know, we've actually postponed this show probably about 10 times over the last two weeks due to our massive uh, workload that we are both doing in our current fields. Uh, Katie, superb speech. We'll just talk about that shortly. Uh, but how are you? Please introduce yourself. And if, for God forbid, there's someone that doesn't know you by now, uh, please give a little brief introduction of yourself. So, um, yeah, like Chris said, I think most people already know who are going to be watching, but I'm Katie Fanning, a.k.a. Bubba Kate versus The State, on some of the social media profiles that you might be able to find that are not currently censored. Um, how could I explain myself? Yeah, used to be one of the uh, UKIP NEC, currently a nationalist engaging in a multiple operational strategy with a bunch of colleagues of mine who seem to be doing quite well. That basically covers it. Oh, and some litigation in between against uh, 
Marxists who think that they can always get away with treating white people in the manner that they do and then come across me and get a bit of a shock. So let's just, uh, we'll start off with that video. Um, what was, but first of all, what was that in aid of? What was going on in that specific moment? So we were at a, a protest in Seacroft and I, I was not really going to be speaking, but um, these gentlemen, the two gentlemen you saw in the video, this rector and this Muslim man, they came over to where our group was and they came over from the lefty protest that was over the other side of this green mm. in Seacroft. And uh, they brought some scones that they were handing out to people. And I was like, oh, please, please don't eat them. We don't know what they might have put in there. Um, and I was a bit inquisitive because they were trying to talk to people and they asked to speak to me. So we got into a discussion and that discussion got a little bit, well, heated because they were basically proclaiming that Britons don't really exist. It's fine if other peoples take our land and our identity and that Muslims are lovely, peaceful people that haven't been doing anything wrong in our country. I got quite annoyed. I mean, I think it was the priest who said something like, oh, well, I'm not actually British, but this man is. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. He's, he's a Pakistani living in Britain with a stolen identity, calling himself British because he's got a piece of paper. But being British is not about where you're born or where you live. It's not about your location. It's about your lineage, your heritage, who you're born to. And I made that very clear. But then obviously I got into one of my Paris rants and started started channeling Kai Morrows a little bit. And uh, yeah, how do you do that? Do you do that? You not get nervous when you're, you're, you're speaking. You're so aggressive, but in a good way. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, <laughs> very fluent. Um, yeah, just it's done with such knowledge as well. It, it, it's it just feels like you just wrote these scripts and just learnt it, but it also looks oh, so was very impromptu, you know, because I, it wasn't a speech. It was a discussion that ended up getting filmed by other people. Yeah. I didn't film it. I didn't even post it online. That half did, you know, who, who does a lot of independent yeah, of journalism. And then I only saw it when it actually started to go semi-viral. But, um, yeah, I think it was my dad that mentioned it. One of his friends had sent it to him and was like, isn't this your daughter? And he was like, yeah, well, let's talk about your dad a bit, actually. Like, I've never really spoken to you about you. Is your dad like uh, pretty much on the same way of length as us then? Or? Uh, I, I wouldn't say so. Um, I have given him a book recently, this book actually, by uh, Arthur Kemp, The War Against Whites. And I've tried to yeah. encourage him to watch um, Battle for Europa um, and other <laughs> Um, I speak to him quite regularly, and before my granddad started, you know, really, really deteriorating, we'd have conversations about the state of the country, what it used yeah. to be like. We even had discussions about the Jews. My granddad said that the only time that he was shot at when he was in the army was by Jews who were trying to kill the British. So wow. um, they're becoming more what you would call red-pilled over time. Mm. But, um, you know, most of most of my family are reasonably easygoing people they're not heavily political well, men they, are they, 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 more so, and i've got a lot of young men in my family so you know it would be beneficial if they were to yeah. start to waken up a bit and come over to our side well, I mean, well, they, 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 they started asking more questions and i think since then the their trust in the government has gone down somewhat so oh, of course of course what does what does your dad think about your like your involvement because you've been so involved you've been on the front line you know, you're around like that, and obviously, as a father, it will be. I know you can handle yourself, Paris. <laughs> of course, we know that. But as a father, I'm sure he'll be a bit nervous when you're, he's seeing you on on the screen there, going up against a, like full grown uh, men. No, not really. Um, I don't think he really worries so much about my safety as you would think. Mm. That's not because he doesn't care. It's just it's because, because he, he knows, knows who you are in your life, you and. Um, yeah, he knows what 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 I'm like. I will leave it at that. Yeah, so so he's not really afraid for my safety because, well, he knows you can handle yourself. Of course you can. So Paris he survived worse. <laughs> do I dare to say congratulations for those that don't know? Our Katie Fanny is pregnant. I mean, we had an interesting conversation. I think the last time me and you spoke about the baby situation. Uh, yeah, over to you. Congratulations. How is Thank it going for you? Yes. Um, 
It was unexpected. It was unexpected. Obviously, it wasn't something that I was planning. But when something like this happens, I mean, you you know, you just roll with it. I mean, at first, I was very concerned because things haven't gone very well in sort of previous pregnancies. In fact, you know, they've been quite tragic and almost deadly. So, you know, I was quite concerned that at the time my workload was so heavy. I was at university, I was creating the White Indigenous Rights Alliance, I was helping other colleagues with setting up their organisations. I have multiple cases, not just the ones against my former university, where I'm doing all the legal work myself, but also helping persecuted nationalists with really serious cases before the courts, challenging convictions. And, you know, there's a lot of moral conflict in doing that. Mm. And my stress levels and exhaustion levels have been peak for like years now. And, um, I was concerned that, you know, I wouldn't be in a healthy enough position to be able to even do this at this stage. And I think my concerns were quite valid, seeing as if, you know, in December I had a massive heart attack. My troponin levels well, were well, different. Different. Well, yeah, go on. Um, we still haven't found the root cause of that. I had another CT scan last Well, the Friday. root cause, surely, is because you, you know, know you, you, do, you do carry on. You, you've been carrying on, like, from what I've noticed, you know, I'm very quite close to you. Uh, that you just carry on as if things are normal. You have to slow down, man. You need your sleep. You need your rest. You know, you're a pregnant lady. Like, well, and I would say those are surely the favourites on boy. I mean, you suffered, unfortunately, a heart attack. Um, yeah, well, uh, to be honest, I didn't I didn't find it that, like, traumatic of an experience. I thought I pulled a muscle in my chest. In the morning, thought I pulled a muscle in my chest. Hurt, hurt badly for about 15 minutes where you're like, oh, that, that takes your breath away. And, it, you know, it kind of started in the middle of my chest, went down the arm. But then after that, I had this lingering moderate pain in my chest and down my arm and it spread to my jaw. And then I started vomiting really, really badly and got this blinding headache. Somebody came back from work, uh, my partner, and he was quite worried because I didn't look well. So we called 111 and as a precaution, they just took me in. And when my blood results came back, they were like, you you need to return to the hospital right now. And then they told me what had happened. But otherwise, I wouldn't have even known. No. Um, but I knew I needed to slow down. I mean, I was actually working on a disclosure that I needed to do for the Fanning versus the Open University case at the time. And I was really stressed because I've got cases against the NHS for... Mm previous things uh, and many other organizations a lot of it seems to be getting settled now outside of course which is a relief but um yeah that 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 has made me slow down i mean i did warn people when everybody was saying oh paris just get pregnant i, I was like well if i do i i can't continue doing the work that i do at the pace that i do it at because it's not even healthy for a full-grown adult but it's not going to survive in me if i if i'm working at that pace so after then, I've started to slow down at the demands of my my uh, medical team. I'm under this specialist team at um, my local hospital that look after maternal cardiac patients. And they, they told me I needed to slow down and disengage in highly stressful activities and advised me to adjourn my cases. So this week, in fact, I was supposed to be Supposed to be beginning my trial this week and tomorrow. Well, was before you uh, run, run uh, let's, <laughs> before you run along, I want. We'll stick to the baby topic one second. After everything that's been said in the past, Paris, K, are you looking forward to being a mother? Yes. Um, you know, I don't have this opinion where I believe that motherhood is the be all and end all of, of female course. existence. I think that women can be fulfilled without being mothers. Um, there is a lot of women out there now who, you know, even if they want to be mothers, they can't for whatever reason, medical reasons and other things. And it is quite sad that people will tell them that their life has no worth unless they produce a child. Now, I've seen and it's well known that, you know, a lot of people, once they have kids, they become a lot more concerned about their activity. They need to put a roof over their heads and they're most worried about their safety and security, which is which is understandable. So I had concerns about being able to engage in the activities that I do once I become a mother. Not looking forward to the beginning stages, to be honest. I mean, I'll be relieved that she's out and uh, that, that they're healthy um, and that they're here. But I, I know that it's exhausting. It's, you know, every two hours they're going to need feeding. And I'm sure you will do it out of love because, you know, we look after pets and we look after other family members. And I'm sure there will be some joy in that. But 
there are an awful lot of women that find that they have a loss of identity and, you know, do become quite depressed afterwards. It's not all sunshine and roses like people make it out to be. Um, it's a difficult thing to do. It's very stressful. It's not intellectually difficult, but let's say emotionally, psychologically and physically, it can be quite difficult, especially if you have a colicky baby or your baby develops tantrums, it has autism. These can be huge challenges. You'll do it because you love your child, but you can't pretend that it's not going to be something difficult to do. Are you, uh, are you uh, worried with, obviously, um, with how much of a profile you've got? Are you worried about the uh, the state coming a little bit harder on you, social services, etc.? No. I mean, a lot of people don't seem to understand this. I mean, because of my past history, because I was a victim of, you know, these religiously yes. and racially motivated rape gangs. If you go to the police and you've been to the NHS, they know all about this in your history. You get an automatic referral to social services anyway if you become pregnant. So, you know, I've dealt with them before the pregnancy started because I knew that dealing with them I would find incredibly stressful throughout the pregnancy mm. and any issues that they have have been resolved and they know if they do not have justifiable cause to come and harass me I'm going to sue the living daylights out of them mm. so you know yeah, yeah this is one of the reasons why I study law because being able to enforce your rights in the courts is a very powerful tool to have at your disposal because the state doesn't care about your rights the people that work for the state they don't care about your rights they will trample all over them if they can but if you can enforce them and you can actually enforce them well they start to behave themselves yeah so that hasn't been a concern social services have no concerns about me or my ability to raise the baby or the baby's safety I'm doing the very best that I can to ensure that I don't put out any identifying information. I know there's a lot of people out there who seem to think that it's appropriate to use their child as some sort of political prop for likes on social media or all these mummy bloggers where dates of birth, where their child frequent, their child's name, all of this they put online. Mm, there's going to be none of that. Um, yeah, well, if I mean, if it, it, again, I will sue the living daylights out of them. You've done this so, to me. In, in, 17, well in 17 minutes, I think you've answered my next question three times now. I was actually right. going to talk about your online activity because I know you have a new channel where you're going to talk a little bit about, more about your, um, your, your your personal life hobbies, you know, maybe like obviously your gym stuff. Right? Well. Uh, really? so obviously, to get this point, there'll be no... We won't know anything about that child uh, no. at all, really. I mean, I will. I will. Well, obviously, people like me, obviously, you'll have a phone call. Chris, this child's doing X, Y, Z. <laughs> because I'm such a good friend. I, but, I would yeah. just be relieved if she arrives yeah. safely because, you know, That's there's been so many things in this pregnancy that have made it very precarious and we're not done yet. There is still a few weeks to go. Mm. I mean, I haven't got long at all. But, um, you know, I, I've been very sick. I barely gained any weight. Um, we're both quite small for how far along we are. I mean, people see me. They're like, if they know how far along I am and they look at me, they're like, you don't even look hey, like can you, can you tell us how far? Uh, I don't want to in case people start guessing birth dates. Um, I won't be announcing their birth date, their name, anything. Um, I'll probably tell people like two weeks afterwards, hey, you know, did it. Um, but... Yeah, for the no, first well, don't do that because they can still figure out the birthday <laughs> roughly, to be fair. But yeah, it's it's yeah. really not. Well, it's you not would, that you wouldn't actually but... think you're pregnant looking at you, to be fair. Uh, not, yeah, uh... and like it's, it, 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 yeah. Uh, and sometimes I'm a bit like, hmm, not sure if I, well, I didn't want to get huge anyway, but you would, you would like it to be slightly noticeable so that people are a bit more helpful with things because <laughs> mm -hmm. people forget. Um, and, you know, people will barge into you in public places if you're shopping and such, because I, I don't look like I'm incapable at this time. The only time that I've looked a bit incapable was when I cracked my ribs. Yeah. And I was shuffling about for about two weeks. Fair enough. Uh, finally, on the, the last personal question, I'll ask you, your partner, we obviously don't need to name him uh, or a her. Or is he a her? No. Oh, really. <laughs> that person <laughs> pregnant if it was a girl mate honestly can i identify as anything they want apparently these days could be a big no, uh, anything definitely but, male. Yeah, but what does uh, your partner think about uh what, what you're doing 
even through your pregnancy, you're still, I mean, yeah, your workload, you know, you have calmed down a bit, to be fair, but you're, it's still at a pretty high rate, to be fair, considering you're pregnant. What does he think of your activity while she's been pregnant? Is he been supportive through the whole thing? Yeah, it's, yeah, well, how, how's your partner been throughout the entire ordeal? Because I'm sure uh, I know you very well. I'm sure that you've stressed him once or twice, Kate. Well, he he copes well with high levels of stress. You know, I, I'm I'm more prone to going into a reaction with with certain things. I'm probably the more aggressive instantly of the two, whereas he's more calm, cool, and calculated. But oh, I would agree. Cool. I would actually agree with that. 100%. Yeah, he, he, it must have been very stressful for him because, you know, at times he hasn't known whether his missus or child is going to survive. I mean, at one point they thought I might have a dissection of my aorta and didn't want me to leave the hospital. But because I was stuck in the emergency department because, well, the cardiac wards are full of foreigners, um, I decided that I'd had enough. I'd been there for like two days. These people screaming on trolleys. Foreigners are pooped all over the only toilet that they had available because they don't sit on it they squat on it it was just i'd had enough and i just wanted a bath and i wanted to go home and they were like well you could have a pulmonary embolism you could have a dissected aorta and he's there listening to this and they're saying if you leave you might die and i've left anyway i mean there's nothing they could do in those circumstances if i had a dissected aorta and it actually properly uh ripped off then i'd be dead within minutes anyway they wouldn't even be able to get me into surgery in time if even i was in the emergency department but yeah, um, he's wanted me to slow down, obviously. He kind of wanted me to anyway. You know, there's a lot of close friends and my partner that think that there are people that take advantage of the fact that I will usually help anybody that comes to me. I would needs. agree with that. I would agree with that. And, like, I was, um, I, I, well, I don't know every name, but I would say, like, I've seen a few, do you know what I mean, like, about the place, and I'm thinking, come on, my yeah um so they 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 get a bit annoyed when you know i'm not sleeping not eating and yeah. working you know sometimes he can quite often he could go to bed and i've got my laptop out he'll wake up in the morning and i've still got my laptop out he'll message me throughout the day it's still out i mean i i have what you call short sleeper syndrome so i can survive on four hours without it affecting me for long periods of time what about, what about I'm well. What about but I was putting it down to like one well, hours a night too. and working twenty three hours of the day. You know, it's 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 not sustainable. Yeah. And they knew that, but you know, I thought I could carry on like that inevitably, and and then, well, the health gives out a little bit. One good thing is though that you know, all these scans and everything they've done of my heart, they can't see any permanent damage, and they're still trying to work out what it is that's caused it. Because yeah. they, they can't find any blood clots. They're looking now for blood clots in the vessels that feed the heart. But, yeah, my man is very supportive. He's very proud of the work that I do. I mean, we work in different areas of nationalist operations, but we work collaboratively to support each other's, well, collective. Well, it's our collective objectives. Yeah. We both want the same thing, but we're going about it in two very different ways. But we we certainly do get advice and support off each other. Um, sometimes switching laptops to see each other's work and such and yeah we collaborate very well but um it must be difficult for him having a missus like me because i i am difficult to deal with <laughs> so i'm glad good. you said it i'm glad you said it i would i would agree but obviously you're a great woman you know, you're a very fiery character but you put your all into uh to the movement and our people and you're very stubborn you're very passionate so you know props props to you man like us uh, Stay true to yourself. We will move forward because I do actually. Well, that was a good topic to end on. Actually, uh, like you, you and your partner going different ways about things, and um, and I, I think there's a, quite a bit of positivity with nationalism. Obviously, there's some. I would say is a bit of downside. We'll go into that later on. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, the final topic um, with a few little down moments, in my opinion, of this year. But uh, we'll go into that later. But um, we've. We've had two registered nationalist parties in the last, uh, I think, I don't know if Homeland was registered in 2024. Was it? I think they were. Was it 2024 or 2023? I think it was 2024. And Alec Yerbury and also the INN are doing something. We'll bring up the INN first and then we'll go up to Alec Yerbury. Uh, we'll go up to the um, Alec Yerbury and, well, like, I don't really want to discuss Homeland too much because I don't like Kenny Smith, but, uh, but fair play, they're not over the line. 
Uh, right, so the Independent Nationalist Network, uh, they released this about a month or so ago. Uh, I think I read it on my recent news update. Please go and subscribe, guys. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I also travel Europe, Eastern Europe, for that matter, um, because it's based, and I'm going Moldova next week. I went Moldova last month. It was sick. Uh, Paris, it was so sick. So based. It, it did look world. good. It did look uh, good. And I went Transnistria, which is bizarre because it's... It's like obviously is they're that, very. Is it even a real state, or is it recognised as a real it's state? It's not recognised as a real state. It's so fox like, it, but they are obviously they love uh, Lenin over there. There's loads of Lenin statues, mm. um, but like, but you speak to them, they're very nationalistic. Uh, I mean, they don't really nationalist mm. communists. Quite yeah, like like with what I tell them, like I'll, I mean, there was one moment I said, Hail Hitler, bitch, when I was holding like a, a Nazi gun. <laughs> Some Nazi, I went to a light, uh, like a museum of guns, mainly Soviet Union <laughs> guns. They had, they had a couple of Nazi guns and, uh, and, a, and a Nazi oh, I think gun. I saw photographs of that. You want, sorry? I think I saw some photographs of that on your channel. I looked at a video, like, it, it got shut down. I, mean, I couldn't include it in my actual film. It got shut down uh, on TikTok straight away. Basically, I got this Nazi gun, this uh, National Socialist gun, whatever, with a Nazi flag behind me. I'm like, hail Hitler, bitch, literally in front of a Soviet Union veteran. I actually, I said, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Like, <laughs> but it was very surreal. It was like being in the 1940s, they're very pro Russian. That what that they, they've got their own currency, their own passport. So to them, it's their own country, but it's not recognised to the UN nations, the EU, all that malarkey. But yeah, it's very much a different country to Moldova, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm going back to Moldova. There's this other. Um, it's not a real country. It's not a country, but it could be in the future. So I'm learning a lot about it. It's called Gag Gagosia. Um, so basically, it's an autonomous region of Moldova. And uh, from what I'm getting at, I might be wrong, but from what I'm understanding is uh, if if, if there's, so there's a percent of Moldovans that want to join back with Romania. Uh, so uh, this Gogazians are saying, like, if Moldova ever becomes a part of Romania again, then we're going to be an independent country. We're going to apply for independent status and also... Be more in line with russia so it's quite fascinating really so i'm going to go there i'm going to try and learn more about that uh but yeah very fa fascinating that'll be interesting uh all right so independent nationalist network uh election training update um oh no actually was that no this is right so this is the first post they made the inm will be running uh a training sessions this summer for people who wish to stand as independents in local elections. The training will cover deep community politics as well as the mechanics of the election process, drawing on over 80 years of combined election experience in our ranks. We aim to deliver a comprehensive guide on how to fight and win a local election. It will be open to our membership as well as people from closely aligned groups within the nationalist uh, for slash dissident spectrum. Uh, no grift. Uh, the cost of venues will be split across all att attendees. So the more that attend, the cheaper it will be. Makes sense. No one will be being paid full stop. The only concession to those delivering elections will be that they don't have to pay. Uh, makes sense. The grassroots cultural revolution will be born in the local community and played out in the local uh, in the council chambers, not in parliament. Anyone who has been in the game, oh, oh, oh I don't need to read that last bit. Um, but yeah, any thoughts on that, Paris? I think election training is is a very valuable activity for people who wish to stand as independents. Local politics. Now, UKIP had a lot of councillors. And the problem was, is that even when they were elected, they, they didn't seem to have an awful lot of power to be able to implement the things that they wished to do. Mm -hmm. I mean... Sometimes it is beneficial, obviously, always to have representation and to be engaging in civics and politics. We can't just be giving up ground and running away and giving it over to our enemies. But um, I, I, I do, I do think about what what people would be able to do from the position of being a councillor. I mean, often people see it as a progressive step towards, you know, Parliament. You know, if I if I 
do well in my ward, then maybe then if I stand in a constituency as an MP, I then might be able to represent that constituency. But, you know, you've got a lot of places that have devolved governments where the mayors are kind of in control. Um, and even with local councils and local authorities, like I say, they don't have a lot of power. I mean, look at the local authorities that have been trying to challenge things like 2000 migrants being dropped on their doorstep. They're having to bring judicial reviews against the government, but the government keeps winning. Mm. So I do think that local politics is something that should be engaged in, but I don't think it should be seen as the strategy for political engagement, because I don't think that grassroots up quite works in the way that people would expect it to. I do think that training independence is important, though. And the, the, the Rochdale by-election, which I know wasn't for local elections, it was a by-election. Yeah. I did find it very interesting that Tully, who, who stood as an independent and came second. He beat all who, the who came, oh, who that? Who came second? He something percent of the vote. He, he did very well. Who's that? Um, Sorry. Sorry? Who came second? An independent. I think, was it David Tully? Let me... Double check. I remember the surname being. Oh, right. Well, okay. Uh, well, he came second behind George Galloway. Galloway he beat yeah. all of the, the candidates that were backed by major parties. And the other independents, I was keeping an eye on this particular by election because somebody who I've known for many years was standing. Yeah, in I know him. I know him. Okay. So um, I was hoping that he would do quite well because he's done amazing work in Rochdale. He has, yeah. 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 But he, he, don't, he don't get enough coverage. And I would actually, I, I need to reach out to him. I was meant to. We, we, the INM went when, when I was more involved with them. We was meant to speak to him ages ago. I don't know why he didn't uh, unfold. So maybe you can have a word and we'll get him on. Um, yeah, we could do. Um, he's uh, how can I put it? He's sometimes very nervous about engaging with people who might be deemed as racist. He doesn't even believe that you know that that paedophilia, which quite right in Rochdale, the paedophilia problem hasn't just been limited to Pakistani grooming gangs, even though there is an epidemic of that in that area. Rochdale has a long-standing issue with paedophilia. You know, even Cyril Smith, one of their MPs, well-known paedophile who was never never faced justice, a um, bit like you know your Jimmy Savills. Um, who had a paedophile ring there that were raping young boys. I mean, young boys were being pimped out of the toilets outside social services to men. Um, you know, so it hasn't just been a issue with racially and religiously motivated rape gangs. They've they've got real problems with institutionalised paedophilia by peoples who are very powerful. Mm. So obviously, um, he doesn't think that the issues that he focuses on, which is grooming and paedophilia that's been rampant in Rochdale, should you know be categorized as a racial issue so i think he especially now he's trying to gain power in politics he might be a little bit more um selective on who he wishes to engage with so um i'm aware that somebody complained uh somebody who wasn't white complained about my presence at one of the events at one point um even though you know I, i've gone to these events for quite some time i was there when pack uk launched and um Obviously, being a victim myself, I think I, you know, have Absolutely. an interest in it for the right reasons. But some people think if you talk about the racially and religiously motivated aspects of the Pakistani rape gangs, that you're being a racist. So they don't like that. Well, well, we know it's happening with every pe uh, every person, but obviously, like, um, they all deserve the rug at the end of the day. But obviously, if we're going through the law system, then OK, well, we'll, we'll lock the white English paedophiles, the British paedophiles, in jails for life. Oh, um, I hang them too. The poor, the poor that those are not indigenous of our islands. Is that simple? Oh, yeah. Well, it would be equal punishment for all. All paedophiles should should face a death penalty. I don't care what, what colour skin they are. Uh, a nonce is a nonce, and it doesn't deserve to breathe the same air as us. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Uh, just uh, add a final note uh, to the INN training days so you can find them at t.me forward slash independent nationalist network that is their telegram channel so they've got an update which they released yesterday i believe the training session will be conducted in one full day session the provisional date uh for which is 20 uh saturday it's a saturday 29th of june 
Uh, they said they've we've had a good response to our initial post from all across the, the spectrum. And if we if required, we will be able to run further sessions for those that cannot attend the event in June. The day session will include a buffet lunch and each attendee will receive a copy of the manual, which will accompany the lecture to take away with them. Uh, they will confirm ticket prices when they have booked the venue, the price of which will cover the room hire, the buffet, the buffet, uh, printed cost of the manual and any other direct, uh, directly related expenditures. Uh, we would also like to stress that the training is about showing people how to fight and win a local election. There will be no ideological content. If you are interested in attending, please contact them if you need the uh, the address again. It's t.me forward slash independent national network. I think, again, obviously they're going a different way. Alex going to different way, but I think it's very positive that people engage with this sort of stuff. There's been a lot of lazy activism <laughs> by um, some people uh, that just literally won't do anything. Uh, what's the, what, what did we say? Uh, low effort, hot, well, no, low, low impact. It, low but, you know, it, it generates easy content that can be yeah. just spilled out and ask for donations. Exactly. Um, but I think... Um, oh, look, I wrote White Lives Matter on a rock. Nationalism, mate. And like someone wrote it on a post it and put it on their forehead. And like, what are you doing? Like, how can you post this? Like, I got a video on it. I actually spoke to someone I met. So I'm not going to name them, you know, I'm not going to do that to get them involved. I, but like, they said, wait, like, I watched your, your, uh, your, um, your, your video on the, the WLM day, and you was absolutely spot on for it. You know what? It's actually a decent idea, but in <laughs> do something magnificent with it but yeah just lazy stuff like and it's always the same excuse isn't it like oh it's for new activists that just doesn't want to get involved yet like what for the last four or five years like right and writing it with your sausage and things i'm sorry you're gonna get me on a rant about it now yeah <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, but yeah, I, I think it's great work that the INN is doing. It sounds really well organized as well. They've got all these informational materials that people can take away. They've organized it so that people um, who invest in it are investing in it equally. It's not being used as some sort of grift. And it sounds like the content from the experience of the peoples who were previously engaged in local politics and local elections. Um, be very valuable to people who might just want to stay at a local level they might just want to help in their local community uh, and they might not want to have a national profile and stand in general elections I mean, to be fair like i mean the, the training could actually help someone that wants to be on a national level as well couldn't it really of course i mean a lot of it would apply especially the um the the, the parts about how to campaign you yeah. might have some disagreements with it. Some people think that letterbox leafleting is, is a beneficial thing. But when I was in UKIP, we tended to spend a lot of money on that. And then we started tracking data on, you know, the places that we heavily leafleted and where we have and where we hadn't. And it hadn't made that much of a difference. Yeah, so yeah, you, so you are in agreement with me that letterbox leafleting is pretty pointless. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it really has the impact that people think it does but it costs a lot of money and it uses up a lot of time i mean i actually enjoyed letterbox leafleting i did it i did miles and miles of walking around with heavy leaflets and, and getting my fingers trapped in 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 mm. what they call the post boxes on doors uh letterboxes kate jesus see see yeah. what happens when you're pregnant you end up with this baby brain and you don't yeah. even think straight <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, it, it, it was quite enjoyable. Usually, you'd go out with some activists and you'd, yeah. I think so like so you'd, done something. you'd go for some chicken wings and a cocktail afterwards. But, um, you know, overall, it was a great expenditure and a huge use of our time yeah. that probably could have been spent elsewhere. Well, I did make a post recently, and we're going to go on to the uh, the Ali Kirby stuff in a minute, but I did, I did make a post the other day pointing out. Like when, whenever he has his first leaflet, you know, I am not wasting my time and energy going to each bloody name and post it. Like to be fair, I done it with a drag queen. Yeah, I filmed a lot of it as well. I got into some debates. Pretty much the super majority agree with me. And, and to be honest, like a lot of restaurants, shops, they put uh, Ch Chinese restaurants, Indian restaurants. Fact, you know, I don't think it'll be quite that popular when it's like a, a British nationalist pie. However. Um, but with the uh, the drag queen stuff, 
uh, pretty much 95% of where I live and in surrounding area agree with me. I got into a couple of debates, but I know what I'm talking about. I can handle myself as well. Um, but that is what I'll be doing. I'll be going on the streets. I'll be going up. Obviously, I'll be approaching what I truly believe is a, a, probably a British citizen, a true British citizen, shall we say, like an indigenous uh, ethnic to our island. And I'll be speaking to them. Here's our leaflet. This is what it's about. Any questions, please email the email on the website or speak to me. Here's my phone number. And that's what it's about. I'm in this to win it. I'm not in it to make bloody mate after mate. You know, a, lot, a few people don't like me. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? I'm in it to win it for my people. And I don't care. I will literally go on the streets and the cities and towns, handing out an Aiki Avery party leaflet. And hopefully people, uh, yeah, register and get, get behind it. Because we are running out of time. I'm not saying he's going to win. You know, I'm not deluded to think, ah, it's definitely going to win and our people will be saying, it's a fuck, it's a long battle, man. And it's a struggling battle, but we've got to try to the bitter end. I mean, a lot of people say there is no political route. There is no electoral route. A lot of people think we should just give up, run to the countryside, grow some vegetables and wait for the inevitable genocide. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's a defeatist attitude. I mean, it I've is. been in party politics for for years. I mean, I was one of the directors of UKIP. We got nearly four million votes and didn't even really return any MPs to Parliament. I'm fully aware of how the first past the post system makes it near impossible for any small party to be able to gain power. They can gain influence by taking some votes away from major parties, but two of the same parties, you know, Labour and Tories, are both two sides of the same communist shekel anyway, and they're always guaranteed to win. However, we do know that the environment and the awareness of our people is changing. People are travelling further down that path of realisation, and not having a viable solution to offer to them is one of the major obstacles which our peoples have not yet overcome. I mean, people keep going on about the importance of raising awareness, which, you know, OK, it's important to raise awareness, but it's like going to Rochdale or Rotherham or Telford and telling them they have a grooming problem. Do you not think they don't already know? I mean, go to inner city London, Manchester and Birmingham and say immigration's getting out of control and whites are becoming a minority. Do you think the white people left in those cities don't realise that? That's great. We've got awareness. What's next? What is next? And that's the problem. A lot of people and places are not offering anything. So... You know, I believe in a multiple operational strategy. I don't believe that there is one solution. I don't believe that one political party is going to be enough. I think that we need an array of different types of organisations undertaking different forms of operations that work collaboratively to get our shared objectives achieved, whether that be litigation companies, whether we set up our own community interest companies that undertake a lot of the activities that we're going to be undertaking. We stop asking for permission to do things for our own people and we just go ahead and do it. That is what we should be doing. There is so many different areas of operations. I mean, I've actually mapped out a multiple operational strategy and the political part's only part of that. Because one of the big things that we need to do is start breaking down the psychological barriers that prevent our people from thinking that they're going to be able to save themselves in any sort of manner. It's breaking down the psychological barriers that think that make our people think that even wanting to exist is some sort of an offence to the rest of humanity. You know, predominantly, I would say that the major first obstacle that we need to overcome is the psychological warfare that's been conducted upon our people. And that's partially through awareness, but it's also through creating new educational programmes. I mean, it, it's not just adults that need to be learning this, children do, which is one of the reasons why the White Indigenous Rights Alliance has been designing our own curriculum. You know, there are so many different areas of operations that on their own are not standalone solutions that can do anything, but combined can actually bring about what we would like to achieve. And at the end of that, if we do get to a position where we need a political solution or we have to have some sort of political offering, we can't just say, oh, well, we thought that wouldn't be successful. So we don't have anything even waiting in the sidelines. When people realise how they have been so betrayed and well subject to this genocide by our own state and governments and the people that have been participating in it they're going to want a solution and that will have to be a political party so 
as much as we can use all these different operations to bring about the environment that would be ripe for revolutionary change, um, at the end of it, we are going to need what we call a viable political solution that we can offer to our people, which is why it's important that we start engaging in party politics today and building up organisations like the National Rebirth Party that we can trust. Well said, well said. I actually just wanted to bring you on to a point before I bring you <laughs> to the website. I, I, I sit in a little, like a little documentary sort of the other day about the Japanese. Look, obviously, they're not our people. We're, we're, the, we're the white British, we're the white English. But I do have some kind of respect for them and I want your opinion. So in their schools, like uh, they don't, uh, like at a very early age, they don't have any grades they don't really, you know, have any exams till like a little bit later on in their life. They learn about discipline, respect, manners. Um, they don't have janitors in their schools either. They do the like literally little children. Oh, I've seen them do doing their own cleaning. They get the yeah, kids they do to all do the it. cleaning. Um, like I, I, I don't know about every school, but there are some Japanese schools that make their children, uh, the children. I want to say make them. Well, but it, yeah, it's part of their curriculum to meditate. 10 15 minutes like before every um before they start you know the day at school and obviously as studies show japanese you know when they get older they, they are very more respectful Where, wherever they go they always clean up their mess clip very disciplined you know uh, very respectful people um yeah i don't know how much you know about that obviously you just mentioned the incident a bit about the cleaning but is this something we should look at maybe doing ourselves in England or in Britain. The difference is, is that, you know, the Japanese live in a ethnically homogenous society. They're not in danger of becoming a minority. They don't have third True. world primitives treating their homeland like a third world shithole. Okay, um, well, right, so we, 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 Britain, I get that. Fighting a losing battle with things like trying to teach kids to be clean. I mean, could you imagine a, a school here, the you know the white kids would probably do it. The East Asian uh, like, sort of oh, I'm talking about it, it now a perfect ethno state. That's fucking kids aren't going to do it. You know, Asian kids aren't going to do it. I, you know, the, these oh, people baby. don't don't care about excuse my language, but shitting on their own doorstep. If you've ever been to a highly occupied area of our country, highly occupied by peoples of African or Asian Muslim descent, no. it is filthy they just throw the, sh the rubbish out on the streets they let old pieces of furniture rot in, in front gardens the whole area starts to decay and they don't care that it's full of rodents and it stinks it stinks like the third world i mean i dare any of you to walk through long Sight on a summer's afternoon and not think that you're in like the the, the slums of mumbai that's what they do so it's quite <sighs> difficult to get children oh well <laughs> to be clean and to want to be respectful and to you know act in a manner that we would like when everything around them is just being trashed and destroyed by foreign hostile peoples. Oh, well, oh, well so I, was, I should have rephrased it. I was talking about if, <laughs> in a prefer, in a perfect uh, ethno state world, obviously we're not going to be teaching those. Uh, <laughs> if, if it was in our, what we want an ethno state to our people. Um, I do think that it'd be really important to have kids meditate, um, take some time where they, relax a little bit i would like to see more in our curriculums i mean I, I i'm very how can you put it approving of academics but i don't think that all children and all people are the same i think everybody has their unique personalities and skills cool. and that our education systems should be set up to ensure that each individual child is progressed in the things that they are naturally good at whether that be you know, design, engineering, whether that be art, whether that be caring. And, um, you know, I think that there should be a segregation according to capabilities, IQ and personality type. You could easily do it through Myers-Briggs personality testing, I should think. I mean, it's very similar to the Jungian archetypes. So um, it's one of the things that I've actually implemented into our curriculum in yeah. itself because I can actually identify students learning art using our learning management system and integrate any of these um, psychological methodologies into the learning experiences, but according to their personality types. It's brilliant. But yes, I do think that we should have more um, schooling that is designed to assist different types of people with different kinds of skills and talents to yeah, achieve the very best that they personally can, 
whether that's like vocational colleges, whether that's people going on into academia. I mean, these days, the education system is so backwards. I mean, you've got people of 85 I IQs going to university just because they need to increase the diversity. You've got, you know, university degrees on football management. I mean, it's, it's higher education or academic education has become a joke. Um, and there isn't much in the way of vocational training or, you know, let's say, practical skills training. I mean, in our schools, they don't even teach you anything about finance, mortgages, how 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 to handle money. They don't teach you about our government, our, our political systems. They teach you nothing about how to navigate the legal system or how that works. No. And I think that our peoples need educating in that. I, said, I, I, I was talking to a workmate the other day. I said exactly, I've said it actually countless times. I have even said it on a stream once or twice before in the past. Like when I was young, when I was out of school, I was a nightmare. I went straight to the catalogs. Oh, you know, a bit of a chav. Look at what that. Did you like to do at school? What were you good at? What was I good at school? Well, I was good. At, I was good at PA at school, mainly. <laughs> um, yeah, I liked a bit of maths, engineering. Obviously, I'm an engineer now, so yeah, probably uh, that was more my thing. PA. Obviously, I wanted to be a footballer growing up, but yeah, engineering, PA. Liked a bit of maths. Uh, I was actually quite good at French, actually. Uh, but now I don't. All I know is Jim Paul Christophe and Au Revoir, and that's probably it, yeah. <laughs> but um, but I was saying to someone like uh, when, when I came out of school, I was just straight in the catalogs, the brand new trainers, brand new track suits, big HD tellies, three pound a week, and then it all adds up, and you think I ain't paying this for this. I got a free telly, I got all this. And then you're in debt for uh, for some time then until you start growing up as an adult. I think, shit, I need to start paying those bills back. I do think you need to be learning about stuff like that at school. Yeah, how to improve your credit ratings. These, yeah, things, yeah. Are, these things are quite important. How to save from, I mean, I, I don't believe that kids now born in this day and age are actually going to be able to afford their own homes with the way things are going. So yeah. it might be a little bit pointless. I mean, you know, there's more Indians that own property in our country than than the indigenous yeah. population. And the Chinese are buying up half the properties in the large cities. They're just investing on a huge scale. Ooh. Whereas you got white indigenous families that can't afford a home that are paying extortionate rents, and now they're bribing the landlords. The circo is to uh, kick out their white tenants to get five years worth of rent, new appliances if they decide to house migrants instead. Well, you know, well, the way things are going, you're going to have a huge white British homeless population and people not even being able to afford a shoebox whilst Pakistanis live in our houses for free. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I agree. I mean, like, my advice is obviously there's been some, and I love going Eastern Europe, but I don't want to abandon my people and go, do you know what I mean? But like, oh, my, I think you would. What, what, if you ended up with an Eastern European beauty, but she refused to move because she didn't want to come to a multicultural hell and wanted to stay in Eastern Europe. Well, I think we go then. Uh, well, we'll address that if it comes to it, Kate. But I, I hope that does not go to it. But you no, know, love, love can have many uh, things going. Should we say? But uh, no. But what, what my plan is, if I can do it right, is um, and uh, this would be my advice to the youngsters: is to invest in property in Eastern Europe. I don't know the exact figures, but it's dirt cheap, and rent amount that that like tourism is getting massive. Like our like our people are going out. I'm not talking about multicultural tourism. Maybe a little bit, but not many. You don't go to these places and you, you see it like a London, Birmingham, etc. But yeah, it, it's growing in its tourism. Like from our kind of people, a lot of Europeans go in there. Uh, I do think investing property there to rent. Then you got a little holiday home for yourself as well. So when you want to go out there. And live in a base country for a bit because I don't think it's going to happen to them. I can't see. It. Well, maybe it will, but like when I speak to them on the ground, they just like just the way they carry themselves. I just don't think they will take it. Even when you speak to someone in that country that might be a lefty to their nation, <laughs> they would be considered far right in England. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Oh uh, yeah. Um, All right, so we'll move on because I want I do want to discuss uh PA shortly, but uh let me just give you let me just show you this guys. This is the I, I am going to be doing a stream with uh Ali Kyobri soon, so we'll go into it with more detail. But uh, Ali Kyobri successfully um 
registered a political party called the National Rebirth Party. Well done, Alec, and I will be going in depth with that very soon. But we'll show you a little bit of the layout of the website. Uh, there you go, National Rebirth Party. You know, the PA mob all said, it can't be done, it can't be done. It can't be done. It's literally, we just, nationalists are so up against it. it. We just can't do it. We've applied seven, eight times. And then Homeland come along, like, uh, which is pretty much PA, but they all left. And we're like, all right, if you don't want to do it, we'll do it. They got set up within months. Ali Kirby left PA, got it set up within months, you know. That. So don't believe the bollocks that comes out of their mouths. They, they, I, I know it. I was in their inner circle. Alec was uh, uh, quite high up in their circle. Obviously, the Homeland guys were high up in their circle. They're all the same ROs, and they're we're all telling the same thing. They've never been interested in having a political party. Never. They just say, "Just oh look, we're the victims. Give us more money." Like honestly, they've never been interested in the slice. And it's a lot of it is down to the financial aspect of it all as well, as because. Uh, Mark would get so much donations from foreign sources. Obviously, mainly America is his main, and they would have to, uh, that, that would have to stop if they were a political party, it's simple as, which means, you know, there's no money coming in apart from maybe UK donations, which I don't think hits the service compared to what they get. But, um, oh. yeah, any, any comments on that, actually, Paris? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, PAs existed for quite some time. At first, they claimed that they were going to become a political party. And I think after a while, a lot of their people got quite annoyed at the fact that they were being used really as props or cash cows for the little cronies at the top, the grifters. So, you know, they were being taken for fools and they realized this and they decided to leave and they were proven right because within a matter of months, they'd set up Homeland. And Alec and himself, obviously, he wanted to join a a nationalist party you know one that was already established and work with them however i i'm aware that you know in his conversations with people he'd ask them you know do you believe that you can actually achieve what you want to achieve and they'd say no or you know um there would be other red flags involved i mean i think that everybody who yeah. is working within a political party that can be deemed nationalist is probably trying to do their best for our people in some aspects but um there wasn't one that he thought he could fully get behind so therefore he has created his own and um i've liked i've liked what i've seen so far i haven't read everything in fine detail I means people seem to think that you know i've got some hand in this but um this is all of his own work i find it very impressive his constitution was very good yeah um again we'll um We'll go through it in bigger detail when I get Alec on the show. He's a very busy yeah. man at the moment, obviously, but he will be on the show. If you want to uh, sign up or look at his website, it is nationalrebirthparty.org.uk. Uh, his Telegram channel is t.me forward slash nationalrebirthparty. And I think he's also on Facebook and X, Twitter, but I don't really use those platforms. But you can. Yeah, I think he's quite active on mainstream platforms. I don't yeah. know whether he's got. An X account? Has he got an X? Have they got an X yeah, account? Yeah, um, has it, yeah, I think he has. Or well, uh, Alec Yerb has got an X account. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they would have. I'm sure they would have. Uh, but, yeah, we'll go, we'll go <laughs> He's into got a good team behind him. I don't know when all that's going to be released. Um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. Looking forward to speaking to him. Getting to know um, more on what's going on in the background there. So... Congratulations, Ali Kirby. As much as I don't like Kenny Smith, I actually do like quite a few of the Homeland members. Um, well, a, a few of them. You know, I don't know. I don't know all of them, to be fair. But there are some good lads in that movement. So, congratulations. Been a good start to the year for you guys getting registered and also proving it's just a myth that no nationalist party can be registered. So, well done for proving um, that's complete nonsense. Uh, we are going to move on to PA, of course. A um, lot of controversy. Right, we're going to go to you. Everyone knows my opinions, but I want to react to this video because it was about me. Um, it was literally about me. Uh, so I'm going to react to it. I, what did the, so? Wait one minute. I'm just going to fill this. You get, I'll be two minutes. Yeah, no worries. No worries. So obviously, Sam Media, uh, unfortunately, is in jail. 
We'll wait. We'll wait for Paris. Should we wait for Paris? Let's wait. For, we'll wait for her. I want her reaction as well. Right, we'll go to. Uh... There you go. You can contact Ali Kyabri here. There's a contact page. Uh, donate. You know, uh, I've, I've called out a lot of people that's donating, but Ali Kyabri is up and down the country. Never asked for a penny. Rejected pennies in front of me and probably in front of others as well. That's in it. Uh, but every party does need money to go uh, to do their thing, and so yeah, I have no complaints about those that wanted to donate to actual registered parties. Um, but yeah, you've got a little news feature there as well. Oh, we are back. Oh, we are back. Okay, um, I wanted you to see this, so I was just going through the Alec website. It was a bit. <clears throat> Where is it? Okay. Oh, I missed that. I was, I was just having a nosy. I'll look at it. it, it, it the 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 page there while she was getting your drink or whatever you were getting. So, I wanted. Yeah, to... I've decided to get oh, some right. other flower juice because Everyone otherwise I'm going to be attempting to talk with a really dry mouth and getting dehydrated, and we don't want that. Ah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I wanted, I just wanted to react to this because they actually mentioned me on the show. So obviously, everyone knows we'll go through the Sam Media case shortly. Uh, bizarre though, bizarre that Mark Clare actually allowed this to happen. <laughs> right, so it was literally days before he's getting sentenced. The judge, li the, the literally the judge, there's an article on it, right? Literally says, Sam, there will be consequences if you go on social media. You know, if you go on social media or any stream, well, just the internet in general, and talk about the trial, there will be consequences. Have that in your mind. This is five days before the sentencing. Obviously, a bunch. The playing. Yeah. Game. I mean, they're playing a fucking game. Like, this is this is this is this is meant to be the future of our fucking people. Like playing computer games. But anyway, let's watch it. Car crash. Oh wait there, wait there. He's gambling. He's put the final weeks of patriotic talk were like a slow motion car crash. <laughs> well, there was. I mean. I mean. Mark Collette is literally saying that my show is a car crash. And even if it was a car crash, the car crash that's happening to PA is a far bigger car crash than anything I've ever done. There's like seven oh. members in jail. Like, how many of them are close friends? I mean, you're on a show with Sam Media, who's about to go to prison, and you're talking about on the car crash. Are you for real? I, obviously i can't pass opinion on the trial but it's like part of the evidence entered was like a patriotic talk podcast ah, it's like, it, sam don't say anything mate like so why is it like so, so sam media is literally like oh part of the evidence was about a patriotic talk show what like the you were part of national action you were the hundred handers you're getting done for being a hundred handers You've been told not to speak about your trial, and now you're acting like being on my show is like, <gasps> like, like there's such a car crash. You're gonna be, you're gonna be the reason why you might get more additional years. Joke. About All right, but I was. This is why. This is why your wife. This is why your wife didn't want you coming on this show. She's like. Uh -huh. you let, if you let Sam on that show, you better make sure he doesn't say anything daft this time. I'm like, Laura. It's not, I just can't just comment on what happened or anything like that, but it's like, yeah, when that when they, en they entered the PT. Right, I mean, Mark just jokingly says it. A good mate, a good mate and a good leader will strictly say, Sam, shut the fuck up, bro, bitch. Yeah, obviously, Mark won't say that, you know. Like, I'm not saying he'll say bro or bitch, but you, that's what you would do in your parish. You would just be like, shut up, you get muted, you've been told not to speak about the trial was it after his conviction yeah he's been set he's been no he's going to jail right uh four or five days after this has been streamed yeah so it was it was after the conviction yeah it, it, you know they, they, they're very careful about these things you know especially in criminal proceedings i mean one of the reasons i can't give regular updates even with my civil proceedings is that it's they don't like you giving out too much information and you can't really give out information until after the fact that's why i have to wait until after hearings or after yeah, things well, that I have happened but in criminal proceedings in particular um you could be done for contempt of court but you've got to remember that these people their primary activity is really just generating online content for donations 
So, you know, what they've done is monetized, took an opportunity. Oh, you know, Sam was a bit silly. He put up a load of stickers, um, you know, even though he knew that he could probably get done for criminal damage. He decided to go ahead anyway, and he knew what he was doing was unlawful as part of the evidence was, you know, him giving instruction on how to avoid detection and remove fingerprints and such. You wouldn't be giving out that information if you didn't think that you were a dupe, what you're doing was illegal. But um, so I think they, they thought, how can we capitalize on this? You know, our relevance is really dropping. We've got actual nationalist political parties starting. You know, the National Justice Party in the United States has collapsed. We don't really offer anything, any solutions to our people, and yeah. we've been around for five years. So we'll use this case to try and make ourselves relevant. And then Mark, you know, because one thing he is good at is uh, being a snake oil salesman and um, conning people with his usury into giving over resources for nothing in return. And they've turned it into one of the best persecution grifts I've seen in nationalism. <laughs> Let me let me finish reviewing this actually, and then we're going to go to you. Actually, well, like, I do love you, Ranzo. Don't be a favorite. <laughs> Detalk. I was just like, oh god, what's what's been said here? Um, and thankfully, the thing is, I I'd, I'd already um I'd already gone by that time, but uh i i think I'd, i was having people message me on telegram like mate you need to get a grip of this like what's going on this is <laughs> you're replaced you know, by mad is... of, of all people yes. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, right okay look obviously me and mad don't see eye to eye like actually he nasty actually replaced mad i don't i don't even know if mad came off after the pa thing but like you got there that he's saying people message me like what's going on what's going on chris like as if i'm doing some kind of pro-terrorism uh, stream like what what will these people do? like you've got like oh like seriously are you listening to that you're you've got like seven eight of your own people in jail at the moment like not that i'm saying i agree with them being in jail but you know the system is against us and you're still playing into the system hands you know like who's who's a supporter of mine or what friend of mine truly if you can call Charlie wasn't a friend when he went inside. Obviously, God bless him and his family or whatever, but he wasn't a friend when he went inside. Like, I, I mean, seriously, it's like, oh, 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 God, what's going to be brought up here because I was on the page to talk? Mate, you're, you're going to jail <clears throat> for the thing you ran. You're also lucky that you didn't have a national action charge about you. Like, for, unbelievable. Let's, let's watch the rest. <laughs> he was a mess. So funny. Like, the wor one of the worst was, I remember, I was watching one of the shows, and it was so bad, and I was messaging Charlie, just saying, Charlie, shut it down. Stop him now. Stop him now. <laughs> and it was like, it was so bad. And at the end of it, like your former, like the former host of the show was like, no, it wasn't that bad. They never did anything about it. And then when I got pulled into that interview with Dominic Kennedy, Dominic Kennedy was like, how do you answer for this? And I was just like, oh my God. Uh, the minute he said patriotic talk, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get roast. <laughs> this is it. This is it, guys. We're all going. Yeah, well, it, they're all moaning about that particular show with Thomas Sewell. Who got, who got sent to jail? No one. No one. Did anyone have a, a knock on the door from the police? No. Like the people, the person you're actually on the show with right now is in jail. Charlie Big Potatoes, the guy that you're like, please, Charlie, do the right thing and end it in jail. Like, honestly. And they're making me out to be this awful terrorist when I'm the one that's fucking free. Obviously, I've had the conviction over the drag queen stuff. You know, learn from it, calm myself down. We're in a, an absolute shocking system where we have to play to the rules as such. I would only be doing something worthwhile now that's going to genuinely attempt to save our people, which is hopefully through Ali Kirby. Uh But he's also there talking about he met Dominic Kennedy. Um, Kate, right. So Dominic Kennedy is a, a journalist. Um, I can't remember, uh, independent or something like that. He reached out to me and said, look, I've seen the four hours. I'm so sorry for how PA have treated you. This is the bollocks he was talking. Can you come and sit down with me for an interview and discuss your time with PA? Tell me everything you know about Mark Claire. You know what I've done? I told him. Fuck off. Why not like him? Well, I'm never going to rat him out. I'm never going to speak to a journalist about a page of alternative. Fuck you. Yeah. And I'll screenshot it, put it out. Yeah. God forbid, like a month or two later, 
there's a big article, man. Big article that Mark Collette, even though he would have seen my screenshot of saying, I'm not going to sell Mark Collette out. Even though I don't like him, I'm not going to meet you and sit down and talk about Mark Collette. Mark Collette goes and meets him and absolutely trashes my name, trashes Ben, Ra ben Raymond's name, trashes Tom Sean's name. Yeah. I've been asked for a debate. Obviously, Ben Raymond's in jail. Like, God bless his soul. God bless Alex. You know, so they can't ask for a debate. Tom Sewell, I don't know if he asked for a debate. He was just like, oh, fuck him. He's, a, he's an absolute weasel, which is true. I, I've asked for a debate. You know, we're going all over old ground here, but he's, this is quite a recent stream, so that's why I'm bringing it up again. The guy is a rat. He go, he'll go and sell you out to journalists. He also spoke about um, Anthony Burrows from the Homeland Division that left him to join Homeland uh, and tried to... He literally made a 25-minute case for the police to go and arrest him uh, just a couple of weeks Sounds ago. Sounds like they were trying to make a bit of a case then when talking about your streams. It's yeah, like, exactly. you know, they make mistakes and then they try to divert attention by, you know, trying to get other nationalists in trouble or yeah, sabotage exactly, them yeah. in some manner. But then we're supposed to have sympathy when, you know, one of theirs gets a slap on the wrist even though they don't even recognise half the people that they've ended up getting persecuted from their involvement with PA. You know, there's no fundraisers for their families. Some of these families have had no access to any kind of income because the, the men that have gone to prison were the sole bread earners of the family and their wives have been cut off from any form of being able to access that. They've got kids and mortgages to pay. You know, yeah, nobody cares about them. You know, no fundraiser was made for Charlie after he was locked up and his child died. You know, they're going on like it's the greatest injustice. Some of these people have only basically recklessly shared links to things that they didn't even know were unlawful and are facing years and years in prison as tacked prisoners where they can have their communication with the outside world cut off. Poor guy couldn't even attend his kid's funeral, for fuck's sake. And yet they pretend that Sam Melia getting a slap on the wrist for a crime he did actually commit is the greatest injustice of all time. It's quite sickening the way that these people behave. The usury, the grifting, the lying, the hypocrisy, the sabotage of other nationalists, the attempts to get other nationalists arrested. It's just how do these people then claim they are the, like, the greatest victims in nationalism doing the greatest work? They've got produced nothing of value. The only people that have benefited from the existence of PA are its directors and their partners, because they're the ones that are financially benefiting from it. What have they done for our people? It's like Tommy Robinson. How much money has that man grifted through persecution grift? He wants to go out and talk about the victims of grooming gangs so we can gain money off the suffering of these victims. But how much has he actually invested into gaining justice for these victims? Has he paid for any court cases? Has he paid to rebuild any of these poor victims' lives? No, that's where your money should be going. It should be going into the peoples who are actually trying to help the white community, not peoples who think that they need 60K to go on a fucking holiday because their boyfriend, husband, whatever, has gone away for a few months. And he's going to be spending less time away in prison than a military man would on tour. Yet you don't see military wives going, oh, you know, in these few months, I think I think I need £60,000 holiday to uh, get over the fact that my husband's not here. You know, and it sickens me because these people, these people will utilise the suffering of our people. They'll talk about it in their chats and ask you to donate. But at the same time, they must have a complete disconnect with what they think an injustice is. And what I would like to ask Mark and what I would like to ask Laura from their sales pitch of the greatest injustice of all time. Both of them have daughters, don't they? Both of them have daughters. So if their daughters were gang raped by Pakistanis, right? And you went to the police seeking protection and justice and you didn't get that, you were attacked and persecuted. Would they see Sam's few months in prison as the greatest injustice of all time? Or would they see the rape of their daughters as being the greatest injustice of our time? But these sickening grifters will pretend that they are the biggest victims to ever exist just so they can gain a little bit more profit from our people as their organisation dies and rots in front of us. Um, yeah, well, so, okay. Um, I actually wanted to come back to that, come on to that later on, but what I wanted to address, I think that's the most kick in the teeth because I know, like, we might differ a little bit because I actually I had some sympathy for Sam. You know, I don't... 
You know why I have sympathy over this court case is because we're seeing constant child rape. It's, oh, our prisons are too, too full. Our prisons are too full. It's going to have to be a suspended sentence. And when I see shit like that, and then I think, yeah, it is a bit of an injustice here. But then I, I, they don't know themselves. As you said, they've been on, on stream many times now. You know, it's been sent to us privately. I don't, because I can't, I can't watch them. I literally got to watch them. literally crap. turned that entire trial into content. I found it really odd. I was sent clips, right? Of just before Sam's sentencing, and he's there smiling, and and then afterwards, he's like, you know, Sam Sam's gone to prison. Laura's there with a massive smile on her face, you know, talking about you know the trial. And I'm just like, this is really odd because I've you know I've I've dealt with quite a lot of the the women who have been left behind by persecuted nationalists that have been sent to prison, and they're usually devastated. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like I say, there's a massive difference between eight nine years and you know a few months. Um, so that's probably why she isn't too bothered, because like I say, it's shorter than a tour you'd get in the military. Oh. But, you know, I did find it rather odd that, you know, you'd, you'd basically stream every aspect of it that you can. But they are monetizing it for content and relevance. And that should be oh, evident sure. to anybody who's watching it. I mean, yeah, I do agree. I, I just think, again, like, I'll go back to what you said. Like, there, there are some struggling mothers and um girlfriends partners of people going down like i've had a few of them message me and you know i can only help so far and you know i don't have the biggest yeah, platform do you know what i mean like and i, I do and pa have the bigger platform than me and that's where i think i'll give them more credit if you start standing up for other people do you know what well, i mean lovely, like, PA's then, platforms don't keep getting spammed with the uh, child porn do well, this, so, uh, no. well, this is another thing i i, I will be uh I, I'm, I'm going to a court case this year, and I have been told, I'm not 100% sure, although I know it's them, because it's it's only people like me, yourself, Alec Herbert, people that have had the balls to call it, call it even like unwashed, uh, call these people out, we're the only ones to be spammed with child porn, uh, gay porn, you know, spam... So if anyone watching and, you realize, and you're and you in any of our chat groups, yeah, like, I think even Steve Law's it happened to him. You'll notice on Telegram a lot of nationalist chat groups media is turned off, which why you can't send stickers, gifts, uh, pictures is because PA, yeah, you know, they want to shut you down that much. They have sent they have sent people in to shut you down because I've had a group shut down through this um this way. But like Telegram was shut down, I was poor. Uh, this group is no longer available, and then you have to rebuild. And that was PA's plan to shut down. And I'm hearing at this court case, I'm going to or I'm planning to attend if I can get the day off work. That uh, Mark Collette was the ringleader of this. You now, like, and, and uh, apparently he has admitted this. Well, not you know, he hasn't admitted he was a ringleader, he admitted he was part of a group that organized this. Um, so we'll see what happens. I can't talk too much about it because there's a court case ongoing, uh, but that will maybe be brought up in. That's why I'm so eager to get to this court <laughs> to find out the truth behind this. Uh, just, just to have it. You know, we know it's them anyway, but to have the evidence there put right in front of my eyes at a court case um, would it be special. But you know yourself, Paris. You, we, we've been on Telegram for years. This never happened until. A little bit of the fallout with PA happened. Yeah, um, it's it's you know people go oh it looks so hot, hot so wholesome that they're they're doing this to people's chats. But yeah, you have to wait until these court cases have concluded. It's like I wanted to speak about a couple of the persecuted nationalist cases that um, mm. were attempting to appeal, but obviously because proceedings are still ongoing because of those appeals, I yeah. can't talk about it in any kind of depth but you know you've got people like PA who will have Sam go to prison and there'll be this disparity in their outrage disparity in how much they want to do even when it's for their own people they'll ignore other nationalists who have been persecuted even mock the persecution of these yeah. nationalists and I believe that they're going to be holding a protest outside Leeds Crown Court I mean we talked about value-added activity. What What is that supposed to achieve? And I'll tell you what it's supposed to achieve. It's supposed to generate more content for their pity party to try and get more donations and try drum up some relevance because they don't actually do anything of value or worth. 
That's why they're going to go have that protest, because having a protest outside Leeds Crown Court isn't going to get Sam Mealy released. The only way you'd ever be able to get somebody released is that if you can write a grounds of appeal, get permission to appeal, get it before a judge and then have it relooked at, which is what I do. And now we've got peoples who have been persecuted by our courts that now have a little bit of hope that they might get their sentences reduced or their convictions overturned. And that's how you do value added activity. And you don't ask for a penny for it if you're doing it for the right reasons. Yet these lot will pretend that they're doing all that they can for persecuted nationalists when really they just want to generate content. Again, for likes, relevance and grift money. One, they know that the activity that they're undertaking will do absolutely nothing to resolve the problem. It's bizarre. Like, uh, I mean, there was a guy called, I don't know if you know him, uh, his name was Chad Williams Allen. Uh, he was literally done saying the plan, basically. He was supplying uh, stickers. He actually got 21 months. Uh, so he got 21 months. However, in his second week in prison, he was actually stabbed in the neck. Um, Phenomenal story. Uh, I looked through all the um, the PA pages, not one mention. Not one mention of a nationalist that has gone to jail for stickers before Sam. There was at least uh, four or five. Sam. Somebody listed them on one of my chats. You know, you'll have to forgive me. My memory doesn't work as well at this point in time as it should do. But um, there, there has been a number of them. And there's been other nationalists who have been persecuted and put in prison for similar sort of comments and content. Um, it wasn't necessarily for criminal damage, but if we're looking at the um, incitement part of it or racially aggravated elements of it, you know, there's nothing new in Sad Melia's case. You know, you, you can get convicted of criminal damage if you stick up. That, that's pretty standard in our law. I mean, sometimes you might just be convicted under a local authority for fly posting. It depends how extensive that stickering is and who the owner of the property is and what kind of charge they would like to pursue. But when it comes to the racially and religiously motivated aspects of it and the incitement, nothing in that was new. I mean, they like to make out that it was talking about demographic change and grooming gangs that was what got those charges brought against Sam when it wasn't. It was the comments about Jews. Now, I agree you should be able to produce this information and put it in the public domain. I don't think that putting it on stickers is an effective use of time. And I don't think encouraging other people to engage in criminal activity is a, you know, something that any leader of a political organization, well, sorry, they're not a political organization. They're an LTD company that runs for the profit of their directors. Yeah. Let me just make that clear. But um, as leaders should not be encouraging other people to engage in activity that they are knowingly uh, know, uh, know that it is, is unlawful. You know, so there's nothing new in Sam's case. I mean, I took a little bit of an interest at first because I thought, oh, maybe they're really broadening or stretching this definition of what can be considered racially or religiously motivated or what could be considered incitement. But then when you look through the different nationalist cases, there's nothing new there. You yeah. know, if anything, the only surprise is that he's been treated with leniency. Because most nationalists that have been before the courts in the last year or so have had the book thrown at them. They've gone for maximum sentence. You know, right, we're going to give you eight, nine years. Or, I mean, look at um, Costello, five years. Five years, yeah. James Oldchurch, you got, what, like two and a half? Was it two? He should be out soon. Yeah. Charlie, you know, he, he even went um, he even went with a guilty thinking it would lessen his sentence. Um, That's actually a good point, you know. He actually went guilty and still got uh, mm -hmm. more than Sam did for not guilty. Well, I, mean, I, really, I, I do have a lot of sympathy for him, but also, like, it's just the overreaction to it all. Like, oh, he's a true British hero. Mate, the guy, right, this is not a true... He's already got... A, for those that don't might not know, he's actually got another daughter to someone else. And he's uh, well, is that true? Yeah. You see, I, I, I like, I, I am a fan of Howler's channel. Some of it I don't understand, and he writes in funny ways, but he <laughs> gains information, yeah, well, and you look it up because you think, oh, this can't be true, and it is. Um, but that, that's a, that, no, that, well, the only thing, well, he's that really, I hadn't looked into, but he has got another child, have another daughter that he, yeah, that yeah, he basically them. pretends doesn't exist. Like, I mean, there was a rumor that he had. It, there was a rumor that uh, Sam had an affair with um, 
his missus daughter which is not blood related you know still fucked uh, i i don't know if that's true i i don't know if that's true uh, but you know but he has uh, he has got another daughter that he abandoned uh, also, like, is this true British hearing? I mean, he done he done the hundred handers things anonymous, so he must have known. He had activists been arrested and charged, like, charged before for uh, just, putting his stickers out. It. You know, and, like, somebody who's been around for as long as Sam has, you know, that had seen what had happened with National Action, um, you know, to then engage in what I call you know low impact activity that carries high risk because it's it, awful yeah. what why you would choose to go down that road um that's the only thing that's that's really baffled me about that situation i don't, I don't understand like, the rumors about his private and personal life i mean the only one that i took with any sort of interest and sort thought I'll, I'll have a quick research and see if that's right was the selling of the lgbt uh lgbtpq whatever it is <laughs> propaganda and then it was like yeah, we admit to it after a while, but it's okay because it was for money. Um, and that is the primary motive of these people. And I do feel a little bit sorry for them. I do, because I think most grifters in our circles, it happens by accident. I mean, I do think that some of these people do look at our situation and think, how can I profiteer off of this? How can I gain from this? Whether it's a social media profile, whether it's donations, how, how can I profiteer off the suffering of our people? Some of them do think like this, but I think with a lot of them, it happens accidentally. They don't really fully understand what it is that they're getting themselves into and what they're going to have to sacrifice. Mm. And then they find like, oh, my employment opportunities aren't as great as what they used to be. Ah, I, I'm finding it difficult to make money. Oh, now I'm starting a family. I'm not just a single person. Uh, I need to afford a mortgage somewhere nice. And, you know, um, in fact, I can I can just get donations. And the problem is, is that, you know, they might have got into it for the right reasons, but after a while, they become dependent on the income of it. And they see anybody and anything that offers real solutions as a threat, because if we solve the problems, then their grift is over. So, you know, or if they're not doing anything effective, yeah. other people are, their grift comes to an end and they need that for their survival. So that's why they start to sabotage other nationalist and nationalist operations, because they don't want to see these people succeed because they're financially dependent on the grift. We call it persecution grift because they will always come up with an excuse of why they can't and, you know, poor me and give us more money and we'll solve these problems. Um, I call them Armageddon cults as well. I think they fit into that category or oh, my computer might die where, you know, the world is ending, but if you pay us money, it, it will solve the problem for another year or so, you know. Um, I do feel a little bit sorry for people who get trapped in that situation and I understand how it happens, but their behaviour once they do become trapped in that situation becomes very detrimental to nationalism as a whole. Um, not only because of their actions in sabotaging effective nationalist operations outside of their own grift organisations, but also because the effect that it has on trust and morale and our cohesion. I mean, many, many of us have put our faith in various peoples. I know a lot of people thought Tommy Robinson, you know, was in it for the right thing. And eventually, yeah. once you work out, like, you're being used, you know, your concerns, your fears, your worry for your country is being utilised so that people can use it to profiteer off personally, and they're actually sabotaging anything that might solve those problems that you're concerned about, then, you know, they're no longer part of the solution, they're part of the problem and become the enemy. And I feel sorry for them, like I say, getting themselves in that position. But the behaviour towards our peoples, where they think more about themselves than our collective race and group and nation, is just abhorrent. OK, so a most commonly uh, thing would be from, uh, from a PA supporter, you know, a PA cultist, usually anonymous. They would usually say, you're just jealous. You're just a bitter ex of PA, you know. Oh, I've, I've had these kind of times. Uh, uh, well, what's your response to that, Harry? Well, PA is telling people that because they call out their nonsense, their usury, their grifting, their hypocrisy, their attacks on other nationalists, calling it jealousy is like saying that nationalists are jealous of the Jews. You know, it's not because of the Jews, because, you know, we, the reason that we don't like the Jews is because of their actions. And it's very similar with PA. 
yet they will try and claim that it's jealousy. I mean, what are people supposed to be jealous of exactly? I mean, I, I did I did write quite a, how can you put it, a bit of a naughty post in, in reply to somebody saying that, well, it must be jealousy why, why you don't like these people. And I was like, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll compare what we can do when we'll compare our lives and our situations and um, see if there is anything there that you think that we should be jealous about. Um, at the moment, it looks like PA is going to be on its knees. You know, the grift is going to come to an end. They don't seem capable of achieving anything. And you're never jealous of people who you're disgusted by. It's like, it seems like the only thing that they can come out with now, if they don't accuse you of being a Jew or, you know, being a feminist or doing something. But usually they'll actually accuse you of things that they do themselves. It's it's most absurd. Everybody must just be haters for no reason. We've never done anything wrong, but everybody hates us. Well, I mean, like, I do want to... Jealousy, apparently. apparently. You see the grist coming to an end, but is it really? I mean, like, they've actually... They've got, what, 60,000 from this? <laughs> they are actually getting <laughs> advertisement from Zionist, Tommy Robinson, Zionist... Um, what's his name from America again? Well, they're going to make it a regular thing where one of them gets arrested. Um, you know, because people people will get quite bored of the whole, oh, poor, poor Laura and Sam, you know, considering that he'll be out in a few months and, you know, like I say, shorter than a, a tour away if you were in the military. And he didn't exactly have great employment prospects, so wasn't earning a lot. I mean, otherwise they wouldn't have got so desperate that they were selling LGBT propaganda for money. Um, so, you know, financially, it's been very, very worth it for them. But how many times can they play that persecution grift? I don't know. I mean, they could follow the Tommy Robinson model and, you know, set up events and then get themselves arrested and say, I was arrested for eating breakfast in London. What about my kids? I need money to pay for this legal team and to go on holiday. So, but I think many nationalists, the ones who are a little bit brighter, that have gone past the bread and circuses stage, that don't just want to be entertained by low effort activism that isn't ever going to do anything. Most people are getting quite desperate because they want our situation to change. So they're going to gravitate towards actual viable solutions in the end. They're going to get bored of watching people grift online and make excuses of the big pity party if they won't let us do anything. Oh, look, it's the Electoral Commission. It's the Equality Commission. It's all of these people. Oh, never, never mind the fact that all our people are going to prison. <sighs> I mean, I, I do think that it will come to an end because eventually people are going to want more than just entertainment and bread and circuses and donating to it. They're actually going to want some sort of viable solution. I mean, uh, Well, so you would think. You would think. I mean, like I've said, you know, there's only so much awareness raising that you can do. I mean, people have got to think, what do you want to come from raising that awareness? You want people who've been made aware to take action and implement viable solutions, right? That's the next step. So the people who just talk about problems and then say, give me money, uh, are probably going to become a thing of the past. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to bring up this Michael Good thing today. So... Um, for those unaware, uh, the Michael Gove has named five groups that will be reassessed as a result of the government's new definition of extremism. Uh, patriotic alternative, and the I don't know who the British National Socialist Movement is to be honest, but patriotic alternative was one of them, and there's a few Muslim groups as well. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, PA done an open letter, I'm not going to go through that. Um, also, I think an open letter is pretty pointless on your own website, maybe use some of the 60 grand to take it to core and fight it that way. Would you, Why don't we use some of that money to do something productive and challenge this in the courts? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, mean, I, I could probably do it with very minimal cash. Yeah, um, I, I think an open letter on your own website is just going to get easily dismissed. It, it, it's as pathetic a gesture as going to protest Sam Melia's sentencing outside the courts. But I haven't even heard that, to be fair. Right. That was true. Content I think. for cash. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll read Laura's response. Uh, so she said, Michael, Michael Gov mentions patriotic alternative in Parliament during his speech on extremism, saying we want for 
saying we this is the their four main points that they're talking about one a forced reparation to be fair i've only ever seen them say voluntary reparation want a white ethno state well surely you do white well white british ethno state endorse neo-nazi ideology well, you've got your, your, to be fair, you have got Mark Clare with countless amount of times praised Adolf Hitler, uh, said, like, if we could have any book left in the world, uh, Mein Kampf would be one of them. So you can't really blame them on that. Target minority groups for intimidation. In fact, I think they target their own for intimidation. <laughs> they do target, they target white people much more. Like, the amount, of, the amount of times I've been told, mate, the amount of times, like, I've literally been told, this is what I'm going to bring up, the taller thing as well right now, actually. The amount of times, you have a debate or whatever, you can have a little debate, uh, and I'll have a fucking <laughs> PA member. You know what? I'm going to celebrate the day you die, Chris. Like, that's my, your own people, yeah? You, you and, and the things they've done, do you know what I mean? They'll make up so much shit. They'll try and spam your group with a pile of crap. You know, they have tried to intimidate me so much, but they're anonymous. They're anonymous cowards behind the keyboard. When they've been asked to come on a stream, nope, That's not interested. When they've been asked for a meet, nope, not interested. They want to do it behind their little anonymous profile. Take the piss out how, how I look, but yeah, you're probably a big, a big fat weasel yourself with long hair. And, like, you know, like I've been to many PA meets, not all. Some are great guys, but yeah, there are some weird characters in that organization for sure but for that yeah i do believe i thought they targeted you like you said something personal I, I don't actually agree with some of the things you've actually said about laura you went personal a couple of times and well i will say however mm -hmm. i mean I'll let, you to that. I'll let you respond well, to people that. attack me personally from their circles why would they not expect the same in return yeah, you know, I, I'm known for having yeah. no brain to mouth barrier and I'm not here to make friends or make money. I'm here to make a difference. So I don't really care if I upset some irrelevant grifters. Fair comment, fair comment. I, I would say two wrongs don't make a right. You know, I, I've been like that. As you've said, I probably so, shouldn't have, you know, you, 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 made fun of some of her personal attributes. Yeah, I mean, but, I you know, that people do put a, a high, high value on physical fitness and that sort of discipline. In our circles, and it does seem like we have an awful lot of people who are uh, not not just a little bit chubby, but very overweight, um, very very overweight. Uh, that 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 seem to be waddling around. Um, but if people want to make comments about myself and my my personal attributes, I certainly will about them, especially if they want to make accusations about my psychological well-being and sanity well this this is i, I was sensitive i don't i i i was sensitive the other day as well they they had so well, this is what they do as well like because i was one of them so when <laughs> when you're in a pa in a circle what mark will do is like he'll he'll say someone send me like a, a super chat like it's a free super chat so it's a, it's an un, a, it's an unpaid question oh, and i'll answer it ask at the end it saves him bringing it up basically it's like well i'm just asking the questions in front of me you know he used to do it with me but look there's some drama going on right now i don't want to bring it up chris can you ask the question you don't have to pay i then i will address it that's how it works yeah and he they done it the other day with yourself would you trust someone that's um that's been sectioned or, or, or along those lines on multiple occasions obviously he, he just gave a little stupid laugh <laughs> no i wouldn't <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what it was black. Well, always been very careful when, uh, apart from you know, Sam was a bit silly and actually openly sort of made these um, well, yeah, comments in a chat. If I wanted yeah, to be really nasty, that's why I know I'm on a defamation but... case. But I think Mark's bright enough not to actually utilize my name when trying to defame me in such a manner because they know that the instant that I can take them into court, I will. I'll bankrupt both of them, I'll take the houses, and I'll destroy the families if I need to. If they want to fuck with me, I am not very nice fighting words right so obviously so um i want to speak about tala right i had tala during the whole break i never said a bad word about him he was actually my favorite <laughs> non-white pa do you know pa attracts all these <laughs> you know, um all these non-whites they're a very like um multicultural organization should we say um and tala was one of them you know uh had a, had a lovely lovely non-white girl that he met uh uh, at the York at uh, a hike yeah so two non-whites happily together 
I don't know if that's still together. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Good old PA sorting out the nine, nine whites together. However, like, you know, I actually found him quite funny, you know. Um, but then he says this. So, so, so this is the comments from him. Uh, some man is going to punch your light out one day and you'll have pushed him far enough. By the time he does that, once they're out, he'll probably keep going for a while. If that's already happened to you and you didn't learn your lesson any of the time, you need to be cut off, cut off to the big makers you on him. Okay. Reaction to that parody. <sighs> Well, I, I did I did find it quite amusing. I mean, uh, do these people not have any idea about my past history? Of course, I've already fought with full grown men. Sometimes come off worse off, but sometimes they've come off worse off. I mean, I've actually discovered the identity of this individual, their home address, their phone number, many details about their personal life, actually. I need to give them a ring. I need to give them a ring at some point, but... Um, you know, once I'm no longer in a state of pregnancy, I'm quite certain that um, some fat Pakistani fellow, or just one of them, I, I don't think that he'd do very well. I actually messaged him, I DM'd him, inviting him to attempt to be that man that's going to punch my lights out and continue. I mean, I, I do find threats from brown people quite amusing these days, to be honest, because they're so frequent. Um, but coming from a so-called pro-white organisation, um, having a brown man telling a white pregnant woman that he would love to see her face punched in and then claiming that she's the uh, the, uh deranged one you know, it's like you're the one fantasizing about violence against white women yet you're saying that i'm the one that needs to be looked at it was quite bizarre because there was a few people <laughs> that love that comment they're like laughing and thinking it's an amazing comment and then you said something a few days later about Laura, which again, you know, I've already said it. I don't agree with some of the personal attacks. That's up to you. That's your prerogative. I don't agree with it myself. But like he came, he comes in your chat. Oh, this is just out of order. This is just so sick that you would call Laura this name. I was like, bro. And I said to him, you submit, you as witness, bro, you, literally the other day, you were literally supporting the guy advocating violence towards you like you didn't advocate violence towards laura it's just absolute this is what they're like though they're like oh no, we we want to, like, like, deaf. Like, drop off a bridge chris shame you didn't kill yourself when you tried to blah 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 and but like you said oh someone's fat in your movement <gasps> oh don't say that stop him fighting stop him fighting <laughs> I, I only put one personal sentence about the physical attributes of that person. Usually I don't really go and uh, use personal insults because I, there's plenty of valid political ones that we can use. And Absolutely. yes, um, but I, you know, sometimes, sometimes that inner bitch just comes out in me um, and I'm not known for my restraint, am I? You know, I'm, I'm what did somebody call me? poisonous paris i certainly can have a poison tongue when i want to it's not like anything i said isn't actually true though you know so i won't repeat it but the people who saw it you know they, they know they know that what i'm talking about is correct and that's why they got so upset about it and it wasn't just about her personal physical attributes it was her lack of skills and abilities and success within any of the nationalist objectives that they've attempted at any point mm. Okay, well, we're going to move on to the last part of, uh, of the PA thing, um, which you had an altercation with Laura today. Um, I'll let you discuss your parts of it. But uh, I, I've highlighted it's an altercation. I was surprised she jumped into the, uh, the the conversation. I was having a rest break, and one of okay. their their members, who usually I can have a, a decent discussion with, he will have the odd little uh, underhand snipe at me. But um, most of the time, I actually find it quite fun to engage with this particular person. But then out of the blue, Laura pops up and started talking about how she's the best person for the job. Well, um, well I, will, no, I will read out word for word, uh, get your reaction. I'm not uh, and, and, you know, uh, and, you know, she's working within politics. And I was just like, Laura, you, you don't work in politics. You, well, you well, well let me read about it. You're not a political party. You've never stood in elections. You've never been hired Kate, by a political Kate, party. Kate, 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 shh, shh, shh. Uh, you're getting overexcited. Let me read. She's quite delusional. Let me read about it. Let me read about it. So she said, like, uh, 
So she said this is one of the comments I highlighted. I'd say the person who's the most impacted by my presence is you, Katie, considering you spend all day, every day talking about me. Maybe if you spent a little bit less time obsessing over me and caring, uh, comparing yourself to me, you'd, you'd be able to produce something of value yourself. What is your reaction to that kind of comment? I didn't actually read that one, but that's so funny. Now, I don't think I obsess over her. At the moment, I use Telegram as just an outlet to bitch every now and again because well, <laughs> my channels are censored and I'm not really engaging in social media operations. Most of what I'm doing is behind the scenes. But um, when she talks about something tangible, there is nothing tangible that she's produced. Whereas, you know, I, I over the space of a decade have got a track record of success and the objectives that I've set out to achieve. So when she asked, well, we'd like to see something tangible. I'm like, what, like registering a political party, like filing appeals against convictions that actually get past the threshold and get considered by judges, you know, like establishing actual organizations for our people that aren't a massive grift, like actually running political parties for years, running elections, referendum campaigns, you know, political parties that got nearly 4 million votes, you know, th those kind of tangible results. Is that what we're talking about? I mean, the only tangible result we've got from PA is how many people have they put in prison so far? I said the same. I said the same. <laughs> yeah. So, well, as I say, these irrelevant grifters uh, are going to be history in no time. So, the only reason I even bother at this point is because, like I say, I've got a bit more time on my hands. Heart attack, pregnancy, being told that I have to slow down, not being able to engage in my cases, which I'm very disappointed about. But as of July, I should have new dates for the pre-trial review and the trial. Um, and I will be getting back to that because obviously the baby will be out in here. Um, but yes, I think I think Laura is a little bit delusional as to her position, her relevance, what she's achieved and what she's able to achieve. But um, I won't try and put her down too much. Well, I, I, have, got, I, have, got, I, have, got, I have got one Mind more. Mind you, that 60 grand probably softens it a little bit. She probably, uh, no, probably well, prefers her husband does another stint so she could get a little bit more. Sounds just like jealousy to me, Paris. But uh, I'm only joking. No, so I will. Uh, I will uh, say. So she said as well. Nobody thinks you are busy because you spend. This is uh, Laura to you, by the way. Because you spend all day on Telegram, mainly in drama <laughs> chats, putting together big effort posts about why you're better than me, and writing a list about all the work you've done behind the scenes. Why am I not seeing that? No, well, but listen, but never actually materializes into anything. Why have I not read that one? Well, I do have a lot more time on my hands. You know, unlike her, I actually was engaging in a lot of activity that was taking up to 23 hours a day, thus the heart attack. But being heavily pregnant and being told that I have to slow down my activity has freed up some time. Mm. Um, I don't think that another pregnant woman is going to begrudge another pregnant woman taking a bit of a break for the health of her baby. But she seems to uh, take exception to that. Apparently, I shouldn't be on Telegram at all when she's probably the most prolific poster ever. I mean, I would compare her to somebody like Katie Price. I mean, she'd probably sell her own kids out if it would give her a bit more attention. Um, it's just how she is. It's why she uses her child as a political prop for likes online. I mean, how many times a day does she post? I mean, how many times does she post about the trial? All she does is generate online content. And the sad thing is, is that some people fall for it and they're taken for fools. Okay, but, so... Uh, like, yeah, when it comes to tangible results, as I've said, I can list mine and people can check that and then we compare it to what she's actually achieved. It kind of kills their argument, doesn't it? Uh, and if we want to keep yeah. comparing, I'm going to have to keep reiterating those comparisons I, I think, and putting them in the place. I think there is a solution. I don't think there's any comparison. She's not even anywhere near my league. No, I, I mean, I would agree. Uh, but I would also have this suggestion. Like, when I was in PA, right, um, many moons ago, <laughs> uh, when, when I was in PA, they, they obsessed over debates, over, uh, like, like for instance, Laura obsessed over having a debate with Ashley Simon. Ashley Simon said, look, you're not worth my time. I don't actually mind Ashley, but whatever, <laughs> I think she should, they probably should have debated. 
would you we're going to lay down the gauntlet would you have uh, an online debate with Laura Taylor if it was all what would it be about <laughs> what would we be debating would it be more like a discussion an argument uh, because I, I think politically would, they claim to be no different to myself I, I, but I think we clearly have very different motives as to why we are engaged in nationalism and what we believe value added activity or results based activity actually is but uh yeah i, I don't think think mostly really... you'd only want us on there almost as a a verbal a verbal fight yeah. but, no, uh, well, well, obviously not, able not really. to articulate myself very well so at some point if she wishes to i'm more than happy to have an argument with her but i don't know what no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah I, I think just the debate about nationalism is the way forward what we can do and achieve for our people obviously we'd have to be moderated that sounds like on. we'd be trying to build bridges there and i don't uh, i wouldn't build say bridges. build bridges but um but also obviously it would be it, it would be what i've just stated there like messages from laura and messages from yourself would be put to each other in that debate Obviously, I'd be biased towards you, so maybe I shouldn't host the debate because I'd be biased towards you. Unless it was like I don't a, think she'd let you host that. She would never let <laughs> me host that. But because she's been so obsessed with wanting to debate, it's a PA mark. Oh, I'll well, debate anyone. Oh, I'll win anyone in debates. Um, that's well, what it generates more like online content, doesn't it? That they can monetize. It's good online content. Today I'm debating this person. Today oh, I'm doing this. It, if yeah, she hasn't got anything else to write, it'll be some mush post about her husband. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not gonna happen, but in an ideal world, I would love to see you and her go at it and just talk on all angles, what you both believe in, arguments on like what both of you have done. Just let it all out. Let it all out. I think the people would love to see that. A bitch fight between Kay Fanny and Laura Towler and my oh, mind you all day long. And that's why I think she'll never ever take it. So. Well, yeah, no, no, if it ends up at a comparison, I, I don't think there's going to be a win for her there. So, absolutely, see, we we'll see, absolutely. it could be fun. It, Who it knows? I mean, fun. I mean, if the TRR lads before they realized that you know I was pregnant and she was pregnant, they wanted to organize like you know some sort of physical charity boxing match. I, really, yeah. I, mean, I was like, yeah, let, let's be up for that. I'm, I, I'm so ready. <laughs> uh, but you know, unfortunately, people don't see that as very ladylike behavior. So no. we'll try to be a little bit more civilized and, and put the intellects to battle instead. Yeah, but no, it's gonna have to be a bake off. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually bake, you know, I can actually bake. I'm quite a good cook. Can't make pastry, can't cannot make pastry for the mm. life of me. Anything to do with pastry usually turns out quite rubbish. And half the time when I make bread, it's a little bit doughy. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with that. But cakes, a cakes I do on a regular basis. Mm. Nationalist bake off. But uh, yeah, I don't think that really bake achieves. Much. There we go. Team Paris all the way. Right, let's end the show there. Well, uh, obviously, we'll, any final thoughts you want to say, anything you want to plug, Paris, we'll do a part two soon. Obviously, like, thank you for your time. You know, it's been a, um, a whirlwind to try and get this organised through my workload, your workload. Obviously, your pregnancy situation. We could sp speak to you for another three, four hours easily about multiple topics. But let's give it a few weeks or months and we'll uh, return again for another oh, you, Like, we've only got a few weeks and I'm going to be dealing with a newborn. Um, and well, last week it wasn't possible. I was in the hospital five out of the seven days of that week. So, and I'm, you know, I'm still not let's say out of the woods and neither is she so there is a possibility that i might just get stuck on a ward for permanent monitoring until she gets to a point where they think course, it's advantageous to have her removed so i can't promise that i'm going to be about for the next because okay. okay. um, you know that things are quite unpredictable and precarious understandable, so, understandable. I, I, I wish you uh and your partner all the best in your um Pregnancy, mm -hmm. I hope everything goes smoothly. Please keep in touch behind the scenes. And anything you want, want me to write out. I'm just reading out. through your comments. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Martin, have Martin. You, you ever cosplayed as Morticia Adams? Yeah, have you? No, but I, I think that I might have to. I Do think it. you could. I think you could. I, I, might, I might give that a go some Halloween. 
For those that are watching late, by the way, this was actually pro this was a uh, live to the inner circle. You know, yes. if you want to get into yes, a, a, a few viewers. Yeah, I think got... you're going to have to edit out the bit where my laptop died and uh, I left and came back again. Yeah, um, no. I hope I'll, edit, I'll edit you that as well. So they don't I was, know was mid-rant when that cut off, and I don't know what point it like properly cut me off. So I'll, I'll only find out when I later on. I don't ever rewatch these things back, but no, I, anyway. I, I don't have to listen to myself. It's bad enough doing my travel vlogs, and I have to listen to more garbage. Are but... you off on holiday tomorrow? Uh, no, next Thursday. Oh. This trip, the new one, um, will go very well. The last one was really interesting. You're returning to the same place, aren't you? But uh, yeah, I'm not going to Transnistria. I'm going to Moldova, but I'm not going to Transnistria. That was a bit weird. Uh, yeah, great experience doing it once, but well, yeah. get get the traveling in while you can, because once you become a man that's settled down, you won't have the uh, yeah. time and ability to do that, and that's probably going to happen with you at some point. Absolutely, but yeah. 100%. All right, guys. Thank right, you for thank watching you. the podcast. Please go and subscribe to our Katie Fanning, who's looking lovely as always. Go give her a follow and give her a, a God bless uh, in her pregnancy and good wishes to her partner too. Have a good evening, people. Peace out. Good night. Thanks for having me.